In SwiftUI, there's a couple of ways in which you can build a list of items. One is to use a vStack, a lazy vStack is another option, or you can use a list. And each of these three components have their pros and cons, but sometimes there's an obvious wrong choice or an obvious better choice. In this video, we're going to explore all three of them and kind of see when they make the most sense. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button because that will make the YouTube algorithm very happy, which in turn makes me happy. So I hope you want to make me happy. Anyway, let's take a look at an Xcode project straight away to see how vStack, lazy vStack, and list stack up against each other. So when we take a look at a simple vStack, which is even used in the default template that Xcode gives us, it's basically just a vertical stack of items. If we have a handful of them, we can use a vStack and have two items shown right above each other like what you're seeing on the screen here. This is true whether you're running on Mac OS, iOS, or any other platform. I'm running on the Mac right now. So if I add more items to this, I might actually just duplicate globe and hello world a couple times, I'll run again, and things are completely fine. Now, things do change a little bit when I have more and more items. So maybe I'll make a floor each and I'll have 25 items in there. And for every item, I will make another V stack or an H stack. Let's do another V stack. Let's nest them. And I'll say text item with index font. Just make it bold, I guess. And uh, we'll add a second line of text, right? So this is the description for some item. And let's run this to see what it looks like. You can see that there's more information now than I can fit on the screen. Um, so that means that we should probably make this into a scrolling list. What I'll also do is make it look a little bit better by giving my vStack an alignment of leading and I'll wrap this whole thing in a scroll view. So now I can make a scrolling list of items. That's pretty good. We have our list, we can scroll through it. I'm happy. We might add some padding around our elements to make them look a little bit better and we're still going to be just fine. Now, when we look at how this works, there's some point in time where maybe we have a thousand elements and we run the app and actually things still look completely fine. And that's mostly because my example is really lightweight. I'm just showing some text. If this were a lot bigger or a lot more complicated, things would look different. And what I'd like to do now is go into instruments and see how SwiftUI deals with our vStack. So if I go ahead and profile this application, what we're actually looking for is what happens when this app launches. So the app launched, we see our items, we can scroll through them when we want to. So I can stop here and take a look at what happens here. Right, because here is where we see body evaluation, so that's what I'm interested in right now. And we'll actually see that during this whole time frame in my view bodies, there's a couple of things that get rendered. We only see that we have our content view rendered and our stacks app has a single render as well. This is a little bit misleading because you might think this is fine, but when we extract things a little bit to be more like the real world and we say struct list item and that becomes its own view and we take all of this and we just accept an index here, we go var body, some view, paste this in and then use our list item and pass our index to the initializer. Now, the list is going to look the exact same, right? So you won't see any difference, but when we profile this, we'll actually learn a lot more about what SwiftUI is doing because before it only evaluated our content view and that was it. 
So it evaluated all of the content here. Let's see what happens when we evaluate bodies now. So our app loaded, I'm going to zoom in a little bit in instruments and let's select all of this. Now I see that there's a number that's a lot bigger. A thousand and two view bodies were evaluated. So a thousand list items were evaluated. And that kind of makes sense because we have our VStack and we're presenting a thousand items in it, but the user can't see all thousand at the same time. The user can only see a handful, right? So if we take a look at that app again, what you'll see is just maybe one, two, three, five items at a time, maybe six, if you scroll cleverly, there's a thousand elements here. And that's a lot of elements, especially when they have images or other complicated features in them. So how can we fix that? How can we, can we make it so that we don't have our VStack render every single element in one go? Well, we can make our VStack lazy. I run the app again to see how that changes things. And overall, the app looks the same. What we can see is that the scroll bar moved a little bit. So it looks like lazy VStack and VStack are a little bit different in how they handle their parent container, but that's not the point of this video. The point is if I profile the app now, what we'll actually see is that I can run it and I can scroll a little bit. And as I scroll, what you'll see is that there's view body evaluations. Those weren't there before with the VStack. So let's zoom in again and see what's rendered initially. So initially we see that there's 53 bodies evaluated in SwiftUI and only six in my app. So Stacks only evaluates six bodies. If I select other areas where I did some scrolling, you'll see that there's a bunch of list items as well. That's because lazy VStack doesn't evaluate bodies and render items until they are actually within the viewport. And this is a very important optimization for big lists. So if we compare VStack to lazy VStack, if you have a handful of items that you just want to stack vertically, like I did in my list item, VStack is a great choice. If you want to have a thousand elements that are complicated and have images or other features that might take some time to compute, you'll want to be lazy as a VStack. It used to be the case, I think I stopped on iOS 17, that a lazy VStack would append contents all the time and never drop off contents from the top. That is no longer the case. So when I run my app and I scroll all the way down, we should see that we have a bunch of body evaluations to populate the list. And it used to be the case that as I scroll down, that performance would degrade because the list gets longer and longer. However, since some iOS version, Apple has changed this. And as we scroll back up, we see more body evaluations again. And that's because lazy VStack now also seems to implement some kind of recycling behavior, which means that views that are no longer visible get erased from memory rather than staying around. So that's, I think, since iOS 17, uh, but don't pin me on that. This is on the Mac. So it's probably two Mac versions ago as well that they changed this to be properly lazy with some cell reuse. So if we have our lazy V stack that does all this, when should we be using a list? Well, a list actually comes with mostly layout features. And so if I run my app now with a list instead of a scroll view and a lazy V stack, you see that the layout is slightly different and I can use features that come with a list. Uh, for example, I can also make my list look slightly different. List style plain would make it look like this, because that's the default. Or I can have list style inset, which will make it look slightly different. My items are now inset instead of shown as a plain list. Um, sidebar is another style that we could use. And it really depends on where you're using your list and what you need. Right? Sidebar makes that look like, like that, where it has this sort of translucent background, which is pretty cool. And that's why you would use a list mainly. So list has the same performance characteristics that a lazy VStack has. So if I profile this app right now, 
What we'll actually see is that as I scroll, I also get body evaluations. Let me see a lot of them when I scroll quickly. And when I scroll back up, we also get body evaluations. Those are the green lines up here. So performance wise, it looks very similar to a lazy V stack these days. So to me, the thing that matters most is going to be whether I need any features that lists can provide that lazy V stacks don't. And that's mostly going to be UI based. Um, also lists adopt nicely when you use them in certain places. So a list can present automatically as a list when it's used in my content view. But if I were to have a sidebar or something like that, the list could automatically become more of a sidebar style. You don't get that kind of stuff with lazy V stack. So you really take that into account. Okay, let's recap that because we had our V stack, which was great for showing a couple of elements on top of each other. But we saw that when we added a thousand elements to our V stack, that all thousand were rendered at the exact same time. That's expensive and it takes a lot of time when these views have a lot of logic in them or a lot of components in them like images. Then we saw lazy V stack, which only renders a certain number of items that fits on the screen, maybe one or two more. And as we scrolled, we saw that more and more got added to the lazy V stack. We also saw that when we scroll back up, we get um, more added to the top of the list. So we know that there is some form of cell recycling that didn't used to be there on iOS, I believe 16, uh, but don't pin me on that again. Uh, and they changed that. So lazy V stack now performs much, much better than it used to when it was just announced. And then we also have list, which has pretty much the same performance characteristics as a lazy V stack does. A key difference there would be that there are certain design implementations that you get with list that you don't necessarily get with lazy V stack. So that's one thing that you might want to pin your decision on is how much list design do I need? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, make sure to like the video, and I'll see you again in the next one.